So the first one that we have here is a question that comes from Junior, Junior, a person Junior called Junior Squared. So I think mathematically we can just call this person Junior Squared. Okay, Junior Squared, thank you very much for sending this question to us. We really appreciate uh, you guys sending us questions and asking what you, you would need to do in order to figure out the solutions to these. So uh, this is a beautiful question that reads as follows. It says, in triangle ABC, right, below, D and E are points on BC, BD equals 6 centimeters, and DC equals to 9 centimeters. The ratio of AT to TC is equal to 2 is to 1, and AD is parallel to TE. Okay, cool. So, if I just go back to the love letter and I try to analyze the love letter against the diagram, because it's always advisable for you to firstly read your love letter. If you don't read your love letter, there's a lot of important information that you're going to meet in the diagram. So always make sure you read the love letter against the drawing and make any updates that could help you in your attempt to solve the problem as you, as you move on. So I'm gonna now take the first part. We're told that we've got triangle ABC, right, with a point D. Point D, there's nothing special, it's just a point on a straight line, and point E that also lies on that particular straight line, okay? They both lie on the, on the line BC. Now, the first important useful information says to us that BD is equal to six centimeters. That means this distance from here to there is just as good as six centimeters, right? And then we are also told that DC, from D all the way, to see the length of that particular part there is simply nine centimeters. All right, now, one of the most important things that very important to me is these kinds of ratios that you are given, all right? Now, we are told that the ratio to, of AT to TC, let's put that down, AT, all right, to TC is given as two is to one. It simply means that when you take the length of AT and you divide it, right, by the length of TC, you're gonna get an answer of two divided by one. It doesn't, however, mean that the length of AT is 2. And it doesn't, however, mean that the length of TC will be 1. They are not. It just means when you divide those two, you're going to get an answer of 2 is to 1, right? For all we know, you could find that the length of AT is 20 and the length of TC is 10. 20 over 10 is still 2 over 1. You could have found that the length of AT was 8 and the length of TC is 4. When you do 8 over 4, you still get the ratio of 2. Um, is to one. So we don't know what the actual length of these two sides are. So what we simply do is we introduce a variable, any variable that you like. So I'm going to introduce the variable k. So I'm going to say let the length of AT be 2k and the length of TC be 1k because 2k over 1k is still 2 is to 1. We don't know the actual length. So always introduce a variable if you want to represent that particular ratio as a value in your drawing. So now I'm going to go back to my drawing and then I'll make this update. AT is this length here from here all the way to there. We're going to call that 2 times something. And then TC is from here all the way to there. We're going to call that uh, 1 times some variable. All right? Okay, cool. Now in these kinds of questions, we are only going to use one, one, only one theorem, the proportionality theorem. What does it say? It says if you have a triangle such that one side is drawn, parallel to the third side of the triangle, that line that you're drawing in the middle will divide the other two sides into two equal proportions, such that the ratios on one side will be the same as the ratios on the other side. The short side divided by the short side is equal to the short side divided by the short side on the other side. Or it doesn't matter how you do it. You can even do long on the left, right, divided by the short side. That ratio will be equal to the long on the other side divided by the short side. So that's the ratio, the formula that you're just working with here. All the questions that you're going to be solving are going to be basing themselves on this very important theorem, the proportionality theorem. And when you are using it, please remember to put reasons as well, because this is for some weird reason. You guys never uh, you forget to put the reasons for the proportionality theorem. So I hope you're not going to make that mistake again. Right, so now I have all my analysis. I can now start solving the problems. Let's get to the first question. The first question is asking us to determine the length of DE. So they want us to find the length of DE. All right, so let's look in the drawing. Where is this DE? Well, DE is this simple distance here from point D all the way to point E. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use the fact that triangle ADC, that's the triangle I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus 
on this triangle here, triangle ADC, right? If you look closely, there's a line. We know that this is simply parallel to that, which means we can apply our proportionality theorem. So what I'm going to simply do here, I'm gonna take this as long divided by short, right? So I'm simply looking at a triangle, okay? That looks uh, somewhat something like this. We've got the situation, right? We've got 2K here, we've got 1K here. And for the long length here, we've got nine centimeters, right? So now the ratio on one side of the triangle will be equal to the ratio on the other side because we've got a line that is parallel to the third side of that particular triangle. So the idea I'm going to engage here, since we've got A, T, C, there's A here, there's T here, and there's C here, right? And we also know on the other side, we've got D, E, C, right? I've got D here, I've got E here, and I've got C. So I'm simply going to say, the long distance divided by the short distance, which I'm looking for here. So I'm simply going to say DC over DE. I'm going long over short. I must simply repeat the same. I must also say long here over short as well, right? So if I say DC over DE, that has to be equal to um, AC over AT, okay? What's the reason for that? Well, I'm simply using the proportionality theorem, which holds, in this case, since TE is parallel to the side AD. Very powerful stuff, right. Now, what I'm simply going to do is just substitute what I know in this question. Do we know the length of DC? Yes, it was given to us as nine centimeters divided by DE. That's what the examiner is asking us to figure out. This is equal to AC. How long is AC? AC is 2K plus 1K, which makes it 3K divided by AT, which is simply 2K, right? Then it's simple, basic algebraic simplifications. You'll notice that the Ks simply fall off because they cancel each other. And then if you do simple simpl uh, simplification here, you're gonna get three times DE is going to be equal to 18. When you divide both sides by three, your DE is going to come out as exactly um, not uh, nine, but six, because 18 divided by three will simply give us a length of six centimeters because these ones are giving us uh, 18 centimeters when you do cross multiplication. So that will be the length of DE. Now, after finding stuff, go back to the drawing and then update your drawing. We now know that if that's nine, we just found that this is simply going to become six centimeters. And if DE is six centimeters, that obviously means now your EC will then have to be three centimeters, six divided by three is also giving us a ratio of two is to one. So this is actually proving to us that everything is still looking well so far. Okay, now we go to 2.2.2 that says to us there, um, if FD is equal to two centimeters, so where is FD? Look for FD. FD is a very small line here. It's this line here, right? If FD is equal to two, so we know that this is now given to us as two centimeters, right? Calculate the length of TE. What do you want? You want this distance here from T to E. Now, where are all these sides that they're talking to us about? They are lying in a new triangle. Which triangle is that? They're simply lying in this triangle here. I'll just simply draw it, this one. That's the triangle we are now focusing on, right? If I isolate it, it has got a point here, which is point B, right? It goes to T and then it comes back like that, right? And then we've got a T here, not a T, but an F, all right? And then we've got a D here. We've got F and D, and we are being told that the length of that FD is two. And then there's T here, and we've got E here. The examiner is interested in finding the length of that side, right? Now, if you remember from what we know from grade 10, something important is going to happen. What you also know is this line is parallel to that, right? And we found that this is six, and we were given that this is also six. So when I look at this, to me, it looks like the midpoint theorem. I don't know if you guys still remember the midpoint theorem from grade 10. Very powerful theorem that you did in grade 10 that says, if you've got a triangle and then you draw a line at the midpoint of both those two sides, something interesting is going to happen. Let me show it to you, right? What I'm talking about is what we did in grade 10, where they said the midpoint theorem, four things are happening in the midpoint theorem, right? Four things that I want you to keep in mind, four bullet points. If I'm sitting with A, B, C, and I'm calling this T, C, right? If A, T is equals to T, B, and A, C is equals to uh, maybe, let's use a different variable here, maybe T, Q, right? 
If AQ is equal to TQ, right? AT equals to TB is the first element of the midpoint theorem. The second element is AQ is equal to QC. The third element of the midpoint theorem is that TQ must be parallel to BC. And the last element is that TQ will be half of BC, right? Now, these are the four elements of the midpoint theorem that you guys did in grade 10, the midpoint theorem. It says, if any two of these hold, then the other two are going to be true. If any two of these four things is true, then the other two will automatically be true. If AT is equal to TB and AQ is equal to QC, QC then you can conclude that TQ is parallel to BC, and you can also conclude that TQ is half of BC. So if any of these four things, any two of them is true, then we can conclude the other two. Now let's go back and check in our diagram what are we dealing with here. In our diagram, we can all see that, number one, the first thing that holds is that BD is equal to DE, right? According to what I'm looking at there, BD is equal to DE because they're both six. So the first element of my midpoint is holding. The second element that holds is that that line FD is parallel to TE. We were told that they are parallel from the love letter. So since those two statements hold, then we can conclude. We can conclude then from this information that the other two will hold, which means the conclusion, I'm going to make it on the left. We can then conclude that it means that BF will be equal to FT, right? It means that we can now conclude that this is equal to that. And the last thing that we can also conclude is that that FD will be half of TE, right? This is all about the midpoint theorem. So if FD is true, then definitely TE will have to be four units. In this case, four centimeters. And I'm using the midpoint theorem in order to make this particular argument. So the length of TE would be two, uh, four centimeters. So how are we going to argue it? You start by saying BD equals to DE equals to six. We can see that. And then FD is parallel to TE, that information was given. This information was given to us, right? Now, if that information was given, two of these are true, then we can conclude that BF equals to FT, and we can also conclude that FD is half of TE, which is going to make TE to be equal to four. And your reason for all that will be the midpoint theorem. That's what you're going to use as the reason for that. Last question. We now need to determine the numerical value. When we say numerical, it means there must be a number that you're giving to us. We want you to uh, find the numerical value, all right, of the ratio of triangle TEC to triangle ABC. Okay, cool. So where am, I, where am I putting that? Well, I'll put it here. Let me just put it here so that we can all see what is happening. We want you to find, all right, the ratio of triangle TEC. Triangle TEC is this triangle here. That's triangle TEC, the small triangle, versus versus the big triangle ABC, the whole triangle ABC, right? We want to find the ratio of those two triangles. Now, in this case, if you think about what is going on here, two things are likely to happen, right? So when you have to do these kinds of questions, when you have to do these kinds of questions, we are sitting with the big triangle ABC, all right, with A here, with B here, and we've got C here, and there's a point T somewhere here, and there's a point, um, I think it's F, is it F, what is it? Uh, if that is C, that's probably going to be E. I think it's E. Let's go back and check it quickly. Yes, that's E. So TEC. We want to look at that triangle. That's E. All right. So we've got that triangle with an E here. We want you to find the ratio of this triangle versus the big triangle, the big hour. So what you need to do is notice that they are sharing an angle C there. Right. So there are two ways of finding these kinds of ratios. You check if they've got a common base or they've got a, com I mean, a common height or a common angle. If they've got a common height, right, then you're going to use the formula of half base times height, right, divided by half base times height because the heights will then cancel out since those heights will be common. But it's not all the case. In our case, we've got not a common height, but we've got a common angle. So if they have a common angle, more often than not, it would work with half AB sine C, the area rule from your 
trigonometry, half AB sine C. So I'm going to use this idea. Why? Because the angle is common. Angle C is in both triangles. So this is actually going to be easier to compute because then sine C will then cancel sine C. I'm just, uh, half is going to cancel half. Then I'm going to have to worry about what the lengths of the sides are going to be, right? So what do we know from the drawing? We already know that this is 2K and we also know that, that this is 1K. We did find the length of EC. Let's go back and find what is BE and what is EC from the drawing. Right, if you go back, you remember that you can see there that EC is equal to three units, right? EC is this distance here, right? From E to C, we can see that EC is going to be three. And if you look at the whole distance from B all the way to C, right? The entire base of the triangle ABC, it's six and six and three. That is simply 15 units. The entire distance this side is simply 15. It's six, six, and three, which gives us 15 in total. All right, so let's go back and put those. All right, so now what do I have? I've got uh, 15 as the entire base of the whole triangle. It's actually 15 centimeters, right? And this one here is simply three centimeters from what I've worked out uh, in the above story. What are they looking for? Well, they're looking for the area, okay, of triangle. What triangle is that? They want the area of triangle TEC divided by the area of triangle ABC. We want to find the ratios, the ratio of these two triangles. Right. So I want to use half, one side, one side sine of the included angle, which is angle C divided by, even on triangle ABC, I want to use the area rule, half one side, one side sine of the included angle. They are sharing angle C. That's why I'm manipulating this by using angle C. So for the triangle at the top, the two sides that you're using, remember this is very important, the two sides that you're using are the sides that include the angle you're talking about. So it has to be one side, one side sine of the angle that is included between those two sides, very powerful. So let's go back and check what is happening here. So one side on the left is actually 1K, so there's 1K. The other side at the bottom is going to be three centimeters. That's for the top triangle. The bottom triangle ABC, if you check one side is 2K and 1K, all the way from A to C, that's 3K. So I'm sitting with 3K here, and at the bottom I've got 15 centimeters. Okay, what happens if you are simply sitting with this? Half goes away, sine C goes away, um, K goes away, three goes away, centimeter goes away. On top, what is left? I think nothing is left, so we're simply going to have one remaining. At the bottom, 15 is remaining, so the numerical value of the ratio will just be one divided by 15, which is the solution to the problem. Very powerful indeed. I hope you understand how to work it out. Now, just always remember, check whether they've got a common height or a common angle. If they've got a common height, half base times height usually works. But if they have a common angle, then you can just use the area rule from trig. Mostly things cancel out and then you can be able to work out what the solution is going to look like. Absolutely exciting.